Welcome to Art Appreciation. This is uh, Chapter 5, uh, our lecture on Chapter of Painting. We will cover such uh, painting medium as encaustic, fresco, tempera, oil, watercolor and gouache, and acrylic painting. Uh, I am an artist, uh, a painter, and so many of these um, mediums I have worked with myself. Some of them I have not, but I'll share that knowledge with you. Encaustic painting. Encaustic painting you don't see very much anymore. Uh, it was done a lot in the ancient world. It is a little bit uh, messy because the binder for the encaustic paint is um, beeswax, which has to be heated. So you would have a candle burning uh, and, and a, a metal pot with, with the beeswax in it, and then you'd add pigment to that. Uh, or you could also have like a burner uh, in, more, in more modern times. Um, I've seen it done. I have not done it myself. Uh, you normally would have a, a fairly stiff um, uh, surface to work on. Uh, it mentions here wood or canvas. Um, canvas might be a tough one. If, if the support you're painting on bends at all, you may get some cracking. So normally you don't get um, don't get that. Uh, yes, so y you have to have the beeswax heated all the time, so that can make it a little bit um, difficult. Um, beeswax is a wax-like substance secreted by bees to make honeycombs and used to make wood polishes and candles. Encaustic painting was in the ancient world. It uh, was used in Egypt um, by the uh, Coptic uh, Christians, some of the earliest earliest Christians in history, and they used them for some uh, sarcophagus um, portraits. Uh, also mentioned here, ancient Greeks painted their ships, and uh, that it is still used today. This is a work by Jasper Johns, The Seasons, Summer 1985. It's encaustic on canvas. Next we have fresco. Fresco um, literally means fresh in Italian. The art or technique of painting on moist plaster surface with colors ground up in water or a lime water mixture. After the Renaissance, the technique slowly disappeared. It, um, it was around during the Great Depression in America. Um, with government programs such as the Works Progress Administration. Uh, it also uh, had a revival in Mexico in the uh, 1920s and 30s. But you don't, you don't see it that, that much anymore. It was, it was very popular um, in the Italian Renaissance and, of course, during the Greek and Roman era. The idea is that you um, put up um, a coating of the wet plaster, it dries to a certain point where uh, you can begin working on it. And average, you know, if you put in an eight or 10 hour day of painting a fresco, you'll, you'll get done about one square yard. The entire thing has to be planned out ahead of time. If you make a mistake in the painting and, and you know, you want to go back and fix it, you really have to ch wait till the plaster dries and chip it out of the wall and then start again. So it's painstaking in the fact that everything has to be worked out ahead of time. Um, the design has to be put uh, put up in, a, in like a sketch, and then then you work on it. So you, you can't really um, improvise uh, as you go. This, of course, is uh, Michelangelo's Sistine Chapel, uh, which he did in the early 1500s uh, for the Pope. It is a chapel that is for the Pope and the Cardinals uh, inside the Vatican. He came back and did several frescoes during his life. And mo most impressive, what people talk about is the ceiling uh, frescoes, which have uh, different scenes from the uh, Old Testament um, on there. A really re remarkable work. And to think that Michelangelo was actually a better uh, sculptor than he was uh, a painter. I'd say one of the main things uh, about this work is that there is um, su such an illusion of mass on the figures that he, he really gives them um, uh, 
the illusion of physical weight and musculature that's uh, pretty amazing. And here we have uh, a work by Diego Rivera. Uh, he was a communist, and um, this is a Detroit industry, of course, you know, a celebration of, of the workers um, there. Um, but it is a massive work. You can see here 17 by 75 uh, feet, and done in the 1930s. He, of course, was um, married to Frida Kahlo, uh, another incredible artist. Tempera. Tempera. Egg tempera is a permanent, fast-drying painting medium consisting of colored pigments mixed with water-soluble binder medium, usually egg yolks. So it would be the, just the yolk of the egg plus a little bit of water mixed up with uh, the powdered pigment. That This has to be mixed up before each painting session, so egg tempera cannot be bought in an art supply store. Uh, has to be made and then has to be used during that painting session. Uh, it, 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 it will not last very well un until um, another session. Um, the layers that go on are semi-transparent and you build up uh, layer um, after layer. You can get some amazing effects um, of lighting and texture uh, using tempera. Um, but uh, it dries very quickly when you put it down um, on the support. So uh, you, you have to work very quickly uh, with it and then build it up in layers. This is a work right here uh, during the Byzantine period, Middle Ages and early Renaissance. So when it was used, um, it was used quite a bit um, before um, oil paints uh, then became uh, very popular. So yeah, egg tempera is permanent fast drying uh, painting medium. Uh, gesso is a white ground of plaster or a thick paste of gypsum and animal glue used to prepare wood panels or canvas for painting. So uh, you know, you know the, the wood is not white um, and then uh, neither is canvas. It's, it's kind of a rough um, tan-like material. And, and so to get brilliant colors to come off of that, to, to bounce off of that, you really want to put down um, a primer um, like gesso begin, before you work. And then uh, on the canvas, the gesso um, will, will get the uh, cotton to shrink up some and it will make the um, canvas tight uh, over the wooden frame. Here we have oil paint. Interesting. I did my first oil painting when I was 10 years old. It was a lighthouse in Maine. I definitely remember that. And uh, oil paint, really, I, I don't care for oil paint very much. I know this sounds um, horrible for me to be saying that. You know, a lot of people would gasp at me saying that. But um, oil paints, um, they have, you have to clean with uh, mineral spirits or uh, turpentine, something like that, which is flammable. Um, if you get it on um, some type of rag or something like that, you have to be careful not to have that rag be balled up and then, you know, thrown on the floor or in a corner because um, it can through a chemical process, internally combust. So it's it's very flammable, dangerous. The fumes aren't very good to breathe in of the turpentine and things like that. And if you get a classroom of 20 people all working with oil paint, uh, the smell um, is very bad for you, uh, kills brain cells, and uh, it's not a pleasant thing to be around. The other thing about oil paint is it dries very slowly. Now, some people like that because they like to keep working into the paint and they can come back days later and it's still wet and keep working into it. This is just a personal preference, but um, I don't have the patience. And, and so I, I really don't care for oil paint very much. But it's kind of a classical medium. A lot of people love working with it. The binder is linseed oil, poppy seed oil, or walnut oil. 
so so that changes you know how how much it yellows and what the dry, drying time is but uh, oil paint does dry very slowly it may take days or weeks like i mentioned oil paint can be used on different grounds paper wood but normally used on canvas during the renaissance we see the use of first use of linen canvas canvas is a surface you paint on that is often made from tightly stretched, unbleached cloth or closely woven fabric, cotton fabric. Here's a classic Raphael, the Alba Madonna from 1510, uh, oil painting. Uh, tondo, as they call it, a circular uh, canvas. And that will be it for part one.